It was a pleasantly cool night. The stars and the crescent moon shone brightly, unhidden by the clouds. A lone figure huddled next to the merrily cracking campfire Noctis and his companions had set up for the night. Luna had volunteered to take the first watch. She was confident she would have no trouble staying alert after the long nap she took on the road. She had been traveling with the four men for three months, searching for the missing King Regis and evading Imperial forces. Noctis grew more agitated over time, jumping at every false lead or rumor like it was a lifeline. Luna could sympathize. If it were her parents, she would have given her all to reunite with them. Luna was on her feet, rapier drawn, before she registered the source as Noctis, returning from his evening stroll. He sat down next to her and leaned forward. She followed his example. No words needed to be exchanged. They basked in the warmth of the fire and in each other's presence. Luna felt closeness towards the silent man, closeness that she didn't recall feeling even with her own parents. It was born from otherworldly experiences that they had shared since they were children. He understood her in a way no living being could. Noctis shifted and turned to face her. I can take over. You go get some sleep. Thank you, but I do not wish to rest yet. I need time to think about things. Uh. They sat in silence for a moment longer before Noctis got up to cast a log into the fire. The wood crackled, a steady stream of smoke rising above the treetops. They could hear a lone cry of a saber tusk, followed by bloodthirsty squeals of goblins somewhere in the distance. Want to talk about it? Two months ago, her answer would have been a resounding no. But things had changed. They had changed. Luna trusted Noctis. She didn't flinch or drum her fingers in anxiety when he sat back down next to her and put a reassuring arm around her slight form. It might help you think things through faster. Encouraged, Luna admitted to her immature fear. I cannot help but wonder if I would have been able to prevent my parents' deaths had I had the ability to predict it sooner. They died during the invasion, right? Luna nodded mutely in confirmation. She wasn't sure if she had leaned against him or if he had pulled her closer, but she found that she didn't care. It felt right. What could you do at that age? Demand them to barricade themselves or double the guard? To run and hide? I doubt they would have listened. Etro, I wouldn't listen if a squirt the size of a fire extinguisher claimed to know better. Noctis tilted his head to see Luna's face, but she refused to meet his gaze and stubbornly kept her eyes fixed on the rocky ground. He gently brushed her tangled hair aside with his free hand, but halted in alarm at the sight of fresh tears on her cheeks. Ashamed, she quickly turned her head and wiped the evidence away. Noctis frowned and tried to recall the times his father had comforted him. All he could remember was the safe, loving embrace that enclosed him. Wrapping his free arm around the upset woman had no immediate effect. But it didn't take long for the valves of her self-control to burst open. She turned and buried her tear-stained face into the crook of his neck and wrapped her arms around his middle, quietly weeping all the while. Noctis didn't know what to do, so he stroked her back in what he hoped was comforting circles. Eventually, her shaking subsided. She hesitantly removed her arms around him and let her hands rest against his chest, her cheeks burning from embarrassment and her gaze glued to his collarbone, reluctant to meet his inquiring eyes. I apologize. I made a mess of your shirt. If you're willing to wash it afterwards, you can make as big a mess as you like. <laughs> hey now, just because your parents are gone doesn't mean they don't live with you and influence your everyday life. I bet they're proud of you. You truly believe that? Of course. Agreeing to marry someone as amazing as I 
The only amazing quality about you, Noctis, is your ego. Truth can be hard to handle, it seems. <laughs> so I'm told. They stood in silence, listening to the dying cracks and pops of dry twigs. He went to toss another log into the fire and took his previous spot to gaze at the clear night sky. Thank you, not. He turned to face her and stuffed his hands deep in his pockets. She clasped her hands together, a sincere smile adorning her slightly flushed face. You helped me put the past behind. No matter how much I told myself that my parents' death was never my fault, the helpless child in me always convinced me otherwise. Hearing a second opinion, it truly helps. Better get used to it. Once we're married, you'll hear plenty of second opinions. She took in his relaxed stance, hands still in his pocket like a bashful schoolboy's. But the intense mature focus in his eyes betrayed his true personality. He could act like a lazy slob, but he had this permanent aura of authority surrounding him that demanded respect. He was a fascinating character. <laughs> I take it back. Your snark is equally amazing as your ego. I wasn't being snarky. Well then, I believe my watch is up. Better hop to it, Highness. Why is it? that my own companions and subjects use my title as an insult. Does no one respect royalty anymore? But suppose a small token of thanks would not hurt anybody. Feeling bold, she walked up to him and stood on her tiptoes and pecked him on the cheek. Good night. I could get used to that. So could I, Noct. So could I. That night, her sleep was devoid of nightmares. <laughs>